thousands of Christians come to the Holy Land every year to retrace the steps of Jesus. Now, pilgrims are experiencing the site where Jesus is said to have walked on water. I-24's archaeology correspondent Shelby Weiner set sail on the Sea of Galilee to file this report. According to the Gospels, the Sea of Galilee was a central location for Jesus Christ's ministry. Along the shores of this very lake, Jesus performed the majority of his miracles. Now, over 2,000 years later, pilgrims gather at the same body of water. Boat Captain Daniel Carmel shepherds the faithful out on the water for prayer services. Being a believer working here on the Sea of Galilee is a great, great blessing. I mean, imagine that. All that, every day, worshiping here, like the disciples worshiped on the boat 2,000 years ago. Daniel operates the only sailing company run by believers on the Galilee. But he wasn't always part of the faith. Born to a Jewish-Israeli family, he found Christ through the pilgrims he now charters out to sea. The Lord has blessed me with this company 10 years ago, after I worked for many, many years in every company on the lake. And that's, by the way, how I came to know the Lord, how I came to faith by working here with Christian believers, being exposed to the gospel day by day. His story of coming to faith is why so many pilgrims flock to his boats. Tourists travel here from all around the world to have this special moment in an area known for so many miracles. To be in the place where Jesus was is a deeply moving thing. And to be on a boat like this where I know that the boat captain is a person of faith too makes a difference for me. But to be here on this water, to know that this is the same sea that my Lord walked on, that he met his disciples on, that he gave them forgiveness and patience with, it's a very moving experience. Daniel provides the right atmosphere and mindset for the travelers. After solemn prayer and reflection, he recreates a scene from the Bible casting a fishing net overboard as it's written in the book of John. Before heading back to shore, everyone rejoices with praise songs. Hallelujah. What I do, I actually uh, translate songs, very popular worship songs to Hebrew and also writing new songs. And why Hebrew? Because Hebrew is his language. And then I teach the people a little bit to sing in Hebrew. The Sea of Galilee worship boats takes pilgrims on the water for worship every day. Captain Daniel fills the sea with songs, prayer, and his sincere energy as tourists retrace the steps of Jesus Christ. And Shelby is here with us. Such an interesting story. You know, I could eat all of this stuff up. But what was the experience like, you know, being there? Like, did you feel the difference once people started singing and, you know, really kind of joining together? Yes. There, there are many different emotions that come when you're on an experience like this. First, getting on the boat with these people who've traveled thousands of miles to come and here. we take it for granted. You know, exactly. Like, oh, we don't feel like driving in traffic. Right? Yeah, so we, me and the cameraman arrive, and we're kind of grumpy. It's a long drive. And all of a sudden, we're surrounded by this optimism and excitement. And then you get out onto the water, and the captain turned off the engine. And we have this moment of complete silence. And that's when it starts to really set in how powerful this place can be and the energy that's there and how if you just take the time to stop and listen, it can really say a whole lot. I'm sure, I'm sure. And like to be on the water and know like this is it's crazy fascinating that this is what it looked like then and they didn't have motorboats then. Exactly. So they, it was silent. And you're getting it's that really pure feeling of what it would have been right, like. Right. And and then after the moment of silence and prayer to then turn back on the engine, turn back on the music. Yeah. And then all the water skiers go by, <laughs> right? Does it, now does it stop at different spots along the canal? Like, you know, Mary Magdalene, like Magdala's along there. Like, does it go to other so spots of some it, of his disciples and followers? There's a variety of boat tours that take place on the Galilee. The tour we went on specifically didn't. It just went out into the water to have that time of experience. reflection, mm -hmm. but you can do so much from there because it, exactly what you're saying. It's all there. So much happened. Like you'll go there and I remember doing like a blog video because I, before I came to this show, I was like, you know, keeping track of my own journey and it's like, 
oh my god, like this is where the hills where they talk about, and then they talk about these huge storms, and it's like the Canaran yeah. is not that big, and it's like how do they have storms? It's really like there's so many, you know, different like significant historic moments. Exactly, there. and what makes it so incredible is you're there with these pilgrims who bring out their Bible. And they look up the exact verse, and you're reading it, and you're saying, "Wow, here's this Bible verse talking about when Jesus met his disciples, and they went out onto the Sea of Galilee to go fishing. And here we are on the Sea of Galilee with a fishing net, going fishing. It's really, it's, it's just amazing. How fun. You have a fun job. Meanwhile, more underwater news. Uh, Atlantis. Has it been found? That is the question. An ancient castle has been discovered underwater in Turkey's second largest lake. Divers and archaeologists have discovered the ruins of a intact 3,000-year-old castle submerged in Lake Van. The miraculous discovery happened by accident. Divers have actually been spending a decade looking for a rumored cousin of the Loch Ness Monster when they came across the city walls. It's believed to be a relic of the Iron Ages and the civilization called Urartu from the 9th to 6th century. B C. Very cool. Come